Let's move on to Hebrew. We're going to deal with shalak, the homophone shalak. Now, in my vocabulary guide, Biblical Hebrew vocabulary made easy, I deal with high frequency words. And this word shalak occurs quite frequently. And there are three variations that you are going to want to know and be able to keep distinct when you are reading or parsing Biblical Hebrew. Shalak. One form. Now, we're always going to deal with the call, so if there aren't vowel markings included, we simply add the comments uh, patak, okay? Shalak. Then, we have shalak that does not occur in the call stem, but for purposes of memorization, comments patak, shalak. Then, we have one final word. Let's put it over here. Shalak. Your first step is what? To recognize the differences between these three words. The difference is this. If you haven't already noticed, Shalak. The hate, shalak, the final kaf, shalak, the sonic. So these are the differences that we need to learn to keep these homophones separate. Now the basic principle that you may know, because it's a fairly well mnemonic or it's a memory aid, is to find sound alikes to match with uh, the Hebrew word and the definition. Now, everyone's mnemonic is going to be different. In my vocabulary guide, I've provided examples. They're simply examples. If you get stuck, you can use them. If they're striking to your memory, use them. If not, find your own. But shellac, I think of shellac. Sending uh, bottles of shellac out of my house. He sent. Now, We need to keep this hate distinct. He sent shalak with the final, the, the hate. So you add a mnemonic device for the hate. The hate for me visually represents a house. It looks like a house. So I imagine shalak, my sound alike is shalak, that I'm sending out of my house. I visualize that in my mind. I see thousands of bottles of shalak going out of my house. Shalak. Shalak. Now for this one, I even used a different sound like. Shylock. It sounds like a shy lock. Sh shalak. Now I picture for this, a shy lock, a blushing lock. You have to use your imagination. It's crazy. The crazier, more absurd, the more striking, the better for your sound alike. Don't just hear the sound alike, visualize the sound alike with clarity. I picture a Shylock being cast. Shylock, he threw, he cast. I imagine that Shylock being cast, and what does it hit? It hits a cough, which I use an mnemonic value of calf. It hits a calf in the head and knocks it out. Shellac. I'm sending bottles of shellac out of my house. Shellac. He casts through. I imagine throwing a shy lock and hitting a calf in the head, denoting the final cough. Shellac. Spelled completely the same except for what? The sonic. The sonic I use another visual representation similar to the hate. Circle. Shalak. I use the same sound alike. I don't need to find another one. Shylock works for me. I picture a Shylock being in the shape of a circle. Excuse me. A Shylock in the shape of a very large circle, and I'm forgiving that Shylock. 
that is in the form of what? A circle. He forgave. Shalak. The final homophone. Now, your other alternative to learning these homophones is to go over them and over them and over them and over them and forget them and get them confused. By using these mnemonic devices for what is different in these words, you keep them distinct, you draw your attention to these homophones, you make them memorable, and you tell your memory this is important. You're impressing these things with visual images, which are always much easier to remember than anything that is abstract like single letters.